hello for the YouTubers, this is Utomo, is here to give you my review for the Pirates of the Tr Caribbean Trilogy. Now, before I get started, I need to tell you that this is going to be much longer than my occasional one movie review videos, so I'm going to give you the rating for each movie in advance before I get started on these reviews. But for those of you that don't want to hear them right away, then I suggest you mute the volume for when I tell you each rating for these movies, starting right now. So for Curse of the Black Pearl, 4 out of 5, Dead Man's Chest, 3.5 out of 5, and At World's End, 2.5 out of 5. Okay, got that out of the way. Now, let's review Curse of the Black Pearl. The story follows Captain Jack Sparrow who made his way to Port Royal and happens to meet up with Will Turner, who he ev eventually finds out from Jack that he's a pirate and, that's, and the son of Bootstrap Turner, who had put the curse on the Black Pearl pirates, and now they're suffering from inside yet they're mortal and whenever moonlight hits on them it shows the true forms and so they happen to came by Port Royal wreaked havoc at the night and kidnapped Will's love Elizabeth Swan who they thought was related to Bootstrap when they found the coin of Cortez on her and so they need her blood to try and lift the curse on them and Jack Sparrow and Will Turner join forces so that they can rescue her and stop the Black Pearl Pirates. Now these movies are based off the amusement park theme ride at Disney California. Don't know if you know that yet, but you probably do now. And who would have thought that would be an awesome idea for a movie? This movie is packed with a lot of fun, action, and a lot of great special effects behind it. And Johnny Depp as the sleazy Captain Jack Sparrow was hilarious in his part with his Keith Richards inspiration, his drunk slur, and a lot of funny antics that he gets himself into. And Orlando Bloom was alright as Will Turner, but whenever he's on screen with Johnny Depp, I thought the chemistry was really good in every scene they play off, even during the first part when they meet in the blacksmith's place. Who makes all these? I do. And I practice with them. Three hours a day. You need to find yourself a girl, mate. As for Keir Knightley in this, yeah. But Jeffrey Rush as the villainous Captain Barbosa was fantastic. He was born to play a pirate in these movies, along with two other actors, Lee Ehrenberg and Mackenzie Crook, who played the bumbling Pinto and Raggedy. They were funny in all of the pirate movies, I have to say. Directed by Gore Verbinski, who directed the first Ring movie and the two other pirate movies, I thought he knew what he was doing in the first one. There weren't as many action scenes, but they were entertaining as hell when they got to them, and like all the scenes involving swashbuckling sword fight, and it focused on the story very well. And just for laughs and giggles, I want to point out that the scene where Jack and Will are going walking in water with a boat on top of them, that was a homage scene from the old pirate movie, The Crimson Pirate. And I have to say, that was neat to put a homage like that in there. So overall, I don't have to tell you that this is the best pirates out of all of the four movies, so you'll definitely enjoy this, and I deeply recommend that you have to watch the first one before you watch 
any of the three. Out of five, I give it four out of five stars. Now on to the special features. What we have here are deleted and alternate scenes, blooper reel, multiple audio commentaries, an epic at sea, the making of pirates below deck, an interactive history of pirates, fly on the set featurettes, diary of a pirate, diary of a ship, and produces photo gallery with Cherry Bruckheimer, Walt Disney's Wonderful World of Color, Moonlight Serenade, Scene Progression, and Image Galleries. So, you get, a quite, you get quite a lot from this movie. So, let's move on to Dead Man's Chest. The story takes place a bit later after the events of the first movie where Captain Jack Sparrow is on a quest to seek out the key being held by Davy Jones, which would lead to opening Dead Man's Chest, of course, and so that he would seek out something that's inside it that nobody else does to get near it for. And while that's going on, Will Turner and Elizabeth Swan are prisoners of the British troops, of which he needs to go on a mission to free themselves, which would involve trying to find Dead Man's key as well. So they're both in a race for time to try to obtain this key, and they have several encounters with the Devil of the Sea himself, Davy Jones. And it turns out that Captain Jack Sparrow owes a debt of 100 souls, and so he's on another mission to try and find a hundred people so that he would be free of that debt. So, this movie is still fun, but not as good as the first movie, and the special effects, once again, is awesome. And they look really great when Davy Jones and his crew appears, because, well, they just look awesome with that on. And Bill Nye provides a voice for Davy Jones, and I thought he was a pretty good choice to it because he brings a sense of presence to the character, and I like some of the backstory that's provided behind him. You have a debt to pay. You've been captain of the Black Pearl for 13 years. That was our agreement. Technically, I was only captain for two years, then I was viciously mutinied upon. Then you were a poor captain, but a captain nonetheless. Have you not introduced yourself all these years as Captain Jack Sparrow? <laughs> you have my payment. One soul to serve on your ship is already over there. One soul is not equal to another. Aha! So we've established my proposal is sound in principle, now we're just haggling over price. Price. Just how many souls do you think my soul is worth? One hundred souls. Three days. The only character that was in Davy Jones' crew who wasn't CG'd was Bootstrap Bill, played by Stellan Skarsgård, who I kind of liked in the movie because they really did get to establish that character very well. Now, the problem with Dead Man's Chest is that it uses a lot of repetitive humor that they got from the first movie and put it into here. But there are a couple of fresh ones, and I'm just going to tell you a few. There's a part where Captain Jack Sparrow is battling against a couple of savages that were throwing fruit at him while he was tied up to a wooden pole, and he ends up looking like a giant shish kebab. That was funny. And another part where Jack Spell, Will Turner, and Norrington are dueling on top of a wheel. I laughed to that one as well. And a couple others that you would giggle to. And, but how they bring back a couple of characters from the first movie just seems awkward, or either crowbar in. So, overall, Dead Man's Chest is still a fun movie to watch, but it kind of gets a bit coherent at some parts. But one more thing I want to bring up before I do forget is that 
I really like the look of the Kraken of which they bring into the movie and all the battle scenes involved with him are awesome. So even with all my praise for it, I'm just going to give it a three and a half out of five. Don't know if I'm being generous or not with that. Anyways, on to the special features. This is the two disc special edition. The because of the Black Pearl was two disc, so I don't get why they're calling it calling that one the two disc special edition. But anyways, what we got here are Captain Jack from Head to Toe, Secrets and Legends Revealed, Meet Davy Jones, Discover the Creation, Mystery, and Mythology of Him, Bloopers of the Caribbean, Mastering the Blade, Sword Fighting with the Film Stars, Audio Commentary with the Screenwriters, Chartling the Return, A Production Diary, According to Plan, Channel of Filming the Movie, Fly on the Set, Featurette, Creating the Kraken, Dead Men Tell New Tales, Reimagining the Attraction, Pirates on the Main Street, The World Premiere, and Producer's Photo Diary with Cherry Bruckheimer. So once again, you get plenty on here. Now on to... At World's End. That one didn't need an intro. The story for this takes place right after the second movie where Will, Elizabeth, and surprisingly Captain Barbosa are on a mission to rescue Captain Jack Sparrow from Davy Jones' locker and join in in the greatest pirate battle in history between all the pirates in the world and the British troops and Davy Jones, who had became a servant to them once they had obtained his heart. Now all the things that I've said in the two previous reviews are present in here, only except that the humor is much more repetitive, it uses too many subplots at the point that it's incoherent, and I just hate the fact that Davy Jones has became the lapdog of the British troops. I mean, he was such a badass villain in the second movie, and I hate to see him just turn over to the other enemy just like that. It doesn't explain why the Kraken died in this one, and the Chow Yun fat character could have been eliminated overall because it didn't add much to the main story, and I thought they really crowbarred in the marriage theme between Elizabeth and Will Turner's character, and seeing the two actors together in more screen time. I just thought it was... Yeah. And the climatic battle at the end, of which we've seen glimpses of it in the commercials, was just really disappointing to me, and I was expecting more from it. So, what can I say? It's... Meh. Two and a half out of five. So, on to the special features. This is the two disc limited edition. I don't, I don't get how it's limited since I saw several copies of these on Blu-ray yesterday at Best Buy. But anyways, for special features we have Keith and the Captain on set with Johnny Depp and the Rock Legend, bloopers of the Caribbean, deleted scenes with commentary, the tale of many jacks, Anatomy of a Scene, The Maelstrom, Masters of Design, Creating the Pirate's World, The World of Chow Yun Fat, Inside the Brethren Court, The Pirate Maestro, The Music of Hans Zimmer, and Hoist the Colors, The Story Behind the Song. There you have it. I just reviewed all three of the Pirate's movies in one video. Hope you liked it. Rate, comment, and subscribe, and I'll be back with the review for Strangest Tide. Maybe. This is Utah Moses, signing out.